that we typically have in Midrash during the uh, Torah reading. So we're going to go through the first three chapters. We're right now on like seven and eight, but we're going to go through the first three so we can take our time. And then uh, we'll, we'll, we will continue to go through these. Uh, bit by bit, piece by piece. So uh, you'll you'll notice we'll kind of take them out of the rotation in midrash, so that we can put a little bit more emphasis on it at this portion. So just to kind of do some groundwork, um, Revelation is a book that is written and was written by John. It was given to John, similar to that um, in, in our, our reading, now we're going through the building of the, the tabernacle and, and everything, and, and we notice that Yahweh said to Moshe, uh, do exactly according to all these things which I have, sh I have shown you. Um, we can see here that with John, he was told to write the things that I have shown you. So he took him through uh, several different phases and we'll begin to go through these phases and conversations and gave him the revelation, the end times. Um, and really it's a book that is written in three tenses. So it's just, we got to kind of keep track of, of a lot of different moving parts. Uh, one of the difficult parts of Revelation is it's written of the beginning, the middle, and the end. Problem. We can only exist in one of those. So there's often times where we have to kind of tweak our understanding and our mindset to adjust to what it's saying. Because there's sometimes that it's talking about things that have happened. There's something sometimes where it's talking about things within its context, within uh, the time uh, following Yeshua and following his death right there around the time of the apostles and everything, the time of the early assembly or the early ecclesia or church, that was taking place, that would, for this would have been the now. And then there's times when it's directly speaking to forward, prophecy speaking toward the end. So um, sometimes it's easier to tell, sometimes it's a little more difficult to tell. Um, that's what we have to really. That's what. That's why it's important. That's why. That's why um, Rabbi Shaul says, "Study to show yourself approved." You don't just pick this stuff up and read it and you got it. It's important for us to be students of this word. It's not. It's not good enough for us to just spiritualize everything that's right. and feel like our emotions right. are the Holy Spirit leading us. No, sometimes it's just your emotion. Your emotion. <laughs> right. <laughs> Accept it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <clears throat> so we're going to start with one uh, that's, that's again just kind of a, a prelude in is that we have to keep track of where we're at if we're talking past, present, or future, or if we're talking kind of a overview because there's sometimes, like, like we'll get into this as we go through the first three chapters, we're really going to be talking about the seven churches, and that's an overview. That's something that's addressing a wide range of time. It's not just talking about this particular spot in time, but we're talking about a range of time and a progression of a people. That's really what he's talking about there. So, just jumping in. Uh, All right. First thing we establish is who's talking. So in Revelation, right away, we see who's talking. Revelation of Yeshua Messiah. So right away, immediately, we know who's talking. Oh, can't see. Ephraim. Ephraim. Okay. Um, so right away, we know who's talking. We know that it's Yeshua Messiah who's talking. And the next thing is who he's talking to. And it says, 
and he signified it by sending his messenger to his servant, Yohanan, or John. So again, we have established who's talking and who's talking to. Um, we see there also the witness, um, Yeshua, or, and, 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 and even we, we use it all the time, that two or three, two or three. Um, Yahweh establishes um, concepts, you know, a thought process, a way of doing something. Um, this, is, this is how we can begin to understand him better because we begin to understand his thought process. So when he says two or three, and then he comes back and says, you know, truth is established by the witness of two or three. And then he comes back and he shows us himself in many different manifestations. He shows himself in the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Then again, two or three. He's showing himself and he's positioning himself as truth. So this is all a mindset. So we see there um, that it says right there, uh, Revelation 1 and 1. Revelation of Yeshua Messiah, which Elohim gave him to show his servants uh, what has to take place with speed. And he signified it by sending his messenger. He signified it by sending his messenger to his servant, Yohanan, who bore witness to the word of Elohim and the witness of Yeshua Messiah to all he saw. So you see there that he's establishing that truth. Um, and then there, what does it say? Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and guard what is written in it. For the time is near. Mm. I, I, I truly believe in my heart that there's no greater time for us to take this to heart because the time is near. Um, so you, you get involved, some people say, oh, you shouldn't read Revelation, you shouldn't, shouldn't try to understand it, you should just kind of, you know, just, some, some people believe you don't read it at all, you know, but they didn't read it, so I guess they didn't read that part, blessed is he who reads, <laughs> because right away that says, oh, well, I guess I need to read. Um, so, one in four speaks to seven spirits. And again, this I'm, a, uh, I'm kind of doing some paraphrasing, and, and, and I'll, I'll uh, open up the floor in a, in a few minutes here for us to, to discuss and go through some things. The seven spirits before the throne. Now, I looked up this word that was used, and we're down in four here, where it says, Yo nod to the seven assemblies that are in Asia. And then it says, uh, and who is coming and from the seven spirits that are before his throne. Um, and, and it's funny, we were just talking about this, but that's, that word spirit goes back to the word that they use when saying Holy Ghost. So actually it's quite funny because the way we were talking about it last week is exactly how it's positioned in the word. So what happens is, every time you see this word, it's, 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 uh, the Strong's number is 35, no, no, the Strong's number is, G5, no, G4151. Here it is. Uh, 4151. And its primitive root is 4154. And it's uh, a current of air that is breath or blast. Uh, oh, I got it right here. And uh, a mental disposition, a vital principle, an angel, uh, divine, Christ's spirit, the Holy Spirit life, spirit, mind. Um, so all of these describe what that word is. Now, I looked up all of the different places that it's used in the New Testament because this is a Greek word. Um, it didn't give any reference to the Hebrew word that would have been actually spoken. So not sure exactly which one would have been used, so I'm not going to assume. Um, but the, the Greek word that's used there throughout the New Testament, in most cases, 
it's shown as spirit, as the, the word translated as spirit. And in most cases as well, it is referring to the spirit of Yahweh or the spirit of Messiah. Um, in a few cases, it refers to like when Yeshua cast the spirits out um, of, of the uh, person, it refers to those as spirit. It's using that same word. And also, every time it says Holy Ghost, it's using that same word. So really, they had no reason or point to translate that word as ghost at all. Like none. <laughs> it's pointless. Because everywhere the same word appears, it says spirit, except when it says holy, it says ghost. Sometimes. Not all times. Just right. sometimes. So again, there's a lot of Greek things that are put in that we just have to kind of understand the, the, the mindset of the Greeks. Uh, it was a little different. Um, so the, the Hebrews thought a lot differently from the Greeks, and the Greeks were translating this uh, for, you know, for their, for their use. So again, that whole thing, Holy Spirit, would have been the more proper trans translation. But uh, there's something that stands out, those seven spirits. We've got the seven spirits, seven churches. As we read on down, we will, we'll run into also the seven candlesticks, um, or, the, or the, uh, the seven menorah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see sevens throughout Revelation. Like, seven is a recurring number, a recurring theme um, in in every aspect throughout, as we go throughout Revelation. 